Okay, so uh, today I have gotten into a project that I've been wanting to do for a little while now. So this spring I installed a new T cap rail. I ended up putting these two mooring chocks on to use my Mantis bridle with the drag ring. And one thing I did not foresee, the chafing that would happen on the wood. I left the edges pretty proud because I liked the squared off look of the teak. I thought it made it look more substantial and so I varnished over it but I didn't realize that we were going to start chafing away material from here with the bridle. So I just so happened to have a couple of these that I think they were like in the boat or something like that when I bought it. Had them for years and I decided to see if they would fit. They're nice, geez, pretty heavy duty stainless. And so I have some screws that work. I just installed, dry fit the first one here. That's what it looks like. Pretty nice. Uh, so I'm gonna do the second side. Funny enough, the bridle actually uh, helped me pick the perfect spot. You know, if, if I was trying to guess, I might not have got them in the right spot. <laughs> but, you know, using the bridle also was a, uh, a way to pin it in place while I drilled the holes. On the underside of the, the chafe plates, I uh, put some butyl, and I also used this countersink bit to make a little spot for an o-ring of butyl as like a gasket. And then I'm putting Tef gel on the threads of the screw because I figured, you know, if any water does get in there, this should stop them from rusting. The inspector is here to inspect my work. I demanded she come out and check my quality. Oh no. Okay. I gotta clean the butyl up. That'd be great. Yeah. So you approve? Thanks. I think so. Hey everyone, I'm Parker. And I'm Katie. And this is our boat, Sea Wind. I bought Sea Wind in 2016 with my entire savings and no clue what it would take to turn her into what she is today. With the help of my dad and a few friends, I slowly tackled project after project, transforming this old boat into what I envisioned when we first met. Halfway through this five and a half year project, I met Katie and we've been inseparable ever since. In truth, this only shows a fraction of what it really took in order to get to where we're at today in a beautiful anchorage making this video. Together, we have come a long way. We have learned the beautiful and brutal lessons that the water has to offer. We have come to know heartache and loss and to dance despite it all. I work a full-time job on the go, which presents its own unique challenges and opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's our desire to move slowly and live fully that makes it all worth it. Sailing Seawind is our unique attempt at showing how we choose to live with a lighter carbon footprint, how we plan to make our mark on this ever-changing world. It's a place for us to show that every one of us is connected and that we will all go further together. Big breaths after a cozy weekend aboard Sea Wind. It always feels so good to breathe and move after getting ahead on some work, although we are never actually ahead. 
just making some space for a big sale in a full week in front of us. Okay, it's a gorgeous Monday morning. Actually, it's warmer than it has been, so that's really nice. And we are getting ready to sail away from Deltaville and down to Norfolk. So it's a shorter day today, somewhere inside of 40 miles instead of 60 miles, so that's really nice. Um, all right, let's go. Well, mud on the anchor, but no mud caked on the chain. That was beautiful. That made my morning. There's this incredibly narrow channel that you have to go through to get into this anchorage. You gotta make these weird turns. These bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We got some. We got some good sleep last night, huh? All right, ready? Hard to starboard. In three, two, one. Please don't mind the dinghy and fuel can lashing as it was a work in progress and we've developed a much better system since then. Monday morning, we're broad reaching, the seas are confused, it's like a washing machine, but we're doing like six and a half knots over ground, 6.3 through the water, we got a little bit of current with us still this morning, we got some broad reaching action going on. Look at these honkers out here. is starting to stink like human. I was getting a whiff of like dirty human smell as I was... Yeah, I'm dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There 
go. Seven, seven knots over ground. Today is fucking scary. against current here in the Chesapeake Bay is just, it's awful. And uh, yeah, Katie and I are genuinely <laughs> scared right now. Um, I think we have like 10 foot waves today. I, I truly do think we have about, you know, the rogue 10 foot wave. Uh, Seawind is handling it pretty well, very well, much better than we are. Um, we got 20, 24 miles to go, and we're averaging about 6.1. We're wing on wing, and we're reefed down pretty heavily. We got two reefs in the main, and three reefs in the jib pulled out. But we still have the motor on, because we have current against us, and I just want to really keep our speed up. Not dangerously high speed, but we're averaging 6.1 instead of slowing down to like two or three in the bottom of the troughs because of the current. Um, and the good news is, the further we head south in the Chesapeake today, the earlier the tidal changes are. We have about an hour until we actually hit peak tidal current against us, and then it's gonna start coming down for the rest of the trip. We have about three to four hours left. I would say about three and a half hours. Um, the ETA bounces around as our speed goes up and down. But uh, yeah, this is gnarly. We are staying out of the shipping channels. There are other boats around. There's another sailboat that uh, passed us a while ago. He just had his main up. Uh, and then there's a motor, a motor yacht, a big trawler behind us coming up on our starboard quarter. We've seen 35 knot gusts today. That's a, that's a first for us. This is um, a, definitely more than the forecasted wind. We actually have the slats in, uh, just in case we take water over the stern. And um, yeah, I'm tethered in right now. Katie just went down below to brush her teeth and now we're gonna switch. Uh, that's it. Crazy. moments like this, it is so easy to wish time away. I wish we were there already, I wish it wasn't like this, I wish we never went out today. It is uncomfortable and unnerving. But the thing is, no matter how much you wish, it doesn't change a thing. You can look forward at all the miles not yet traveled, 
and you can look back at the waves threatening to spill over the stern. But all you can do is just be in it. You can take a deep breath, or ten, buckle up, and settle in for the ride. I don't know how long dolphins can hold their breath. It's kind of nice just feeling one motion, like one roll, because both sails are on one side of the boat. We are rolling both ways right now because the boat's powered up and stable. It's a tunnel. They're going under the water. Norfolk and Way. <laughs> so Norfolk right here. This is the world's largest Navy base. Look at all the ships. If you get too close, we're in this channel here. You can see marked by the green buoys. If you get too close to them, apparently you'll be approached. So we're staying, huh? Or something. Or something. You don't never want to try to approach a military base. No, no. <laughs> approach is uh, probably something uh, to put it pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be, to put it nice, you yeah. would be approached. Approached. Yeah.
dredging effort going on here. We made it. We sailed down the entire Chesapeake Bay. Wicked conditions, beautiful nights in anchorages. We added to our sailing experience, tackled problems while underway, solved them at anchor, and even discovered a few other issues to address in the future. Katie and I were so proud when we dropped our sails and motored into Norfolk with plans of rest and recovery before heading towards mile marker zero of the intercoastal waterway.